I've been reading in the paper that the government has introduced a housing affordability scheme by providing financial incentives to investors. Can you tell me more about it? Yes, certainly. It's called the National Rental Affordability Scheme, which is a bit of a, a mouthful. Most people simply refer to it as NRAS. Now, it's a huge commitment from the government. They've committed over a billion dollars for this with the idea of developing uh, over 50,000 affordable housing and affordable accommodation within Australia. It's based on uh, other incentives in, in other countries, such as the United States, for example, and it was actually implemented back in 2009. So it's been running for a few years now. I love the sound of that. I know so many people who are struggling to afford their rent, even though they both have good jobs. Absolutely. I think if the government doesn't get innovative with respect to the different types of schemes and arrangements that they can implement here for increasing affordable homes, there's going to be a huge increase in things like poverty and homelessness within Australia. What type of housing developments are they looking at? All I know about public housing is housing commission schemes. Yeah, it doesn't conjure up positive images in a lot of people's mind, but that's the whole point of NRAS. The idea is to encourage investment in normal, affordable housing. So you really shouldn't be able to distinguish between an NRAS property and a normal property in the lower to middle rental market. Uh, the other thing as well, because they're part of the overall construction of other properties within particular areas, uh, they'll be complying with all of the same safety standards, all of the same uh, government regulations. Okay, so I get that the government's trying to get investors to participate in this scheme, but why should someone consider this type of investment? Yeah, one of the main things that you'll get, it's known as a national rental incentive for each dwelling that complies with all of these obligations. And effectively to get that, all you need to do is offer that property for a low market rental. In fact, you need to offer it at a 20% value below market. Why would an investor want to rent a property for a lower rental income? In my experience, landlords usually want to put up the rent. They certainly do, but of course that's where the, uh, the national incentive, the government incentive actually comes in. Uh, at the moment, people can get an incentive of over $9,000 a year just by being involved in these type of investments. That sounds like a lot of money. Can your average mum and dad investor participate in the scheme? Absolutely they can, as long as it's through an appropriately designed scheme. Uh, your private investor, mum, dad style investors can't directly access these NRAS incentives. So what they will need to do is become associated with somebody who has direct access and is happy for them to invest and of course have those benefits passed down to them. And who manages the property? Yeah, that's an important question. Uh, as part of the eligibility criteria, these properties do need to have a property manager appointed. And that's important not only to find the tenants, of course, but also to make sure that those tenants are eligible and remain eligible for this lower rental offer. And would this ensure high quality tenants? Well, you'd hope so, that's the general idea. Now keep in mind, uh, government statistics indicate that about 1.5 million households in Australia would be eligible to become tenants of this type of investment. Uh, investors are still, however, free to pick which tenants out of that 1.5 million uh, that would be suitable for them. So of course, in, in many ways, it's a normal property management decision that you're making about what tenants should have access to the property. What sort of income levels would the tenants have? Yeah, just to give you an indication, I've been having a look at these figures from, from a single person's point of view. The entry level income currently is just over $42,000 with an upper income level to maintain eligibility to almost $53,000. Uh, and if we put that in the context of your average family, so just think mum, dad and the two kids, their entry level there for their combined income uh, is just a, around eighty-six dollars to $87,000 a year with an upper limit of just over $108,000. What other restrictions are there on these properties? Other than the eligibility criteria that we've already discussed with respect to things like the lower rental, importantly with NRAS, there are no government caveats that are put on the properties. And what happens at the end of the period? Yeah, well, the incentive runs for a 10 year period while you're still renting that out to eligible tenants. But after the 10 year period expires, uh, the property simply reverts to, to the investor to deal with under normal investment property rules. So they're no longer restricted to the type of tenants that they can have after that time. What if I want to sell my property before the 10 years is up? Yeah, that's an excellent question. The NRAS property can be sold. Uh, however, somebody who has an NRAS property, when they do sell it within that 10 year period, what they do need to do is either sell that property to another investor who is gonna continue with the NRAS scheme. So that should be fairly easy to find considering the incentives that are involved. Or alternatively, they can look at acquiring another NRAS replacement property. So there's more money in the pockets of investors and lower rents for renters. That sounds like a win-win situation. 
how can I find out more? If you just simply go to bakerproperty.com.au, there's some very good information there on NRAS and also just negative gearing in general. Thanks for coming to speak to me, Rebecca. That's a pleasure.